Welcome back. Let's continue with our uh, lecture on uh, Riemann space. Uh, we'll take an example of a sphere and try to understand various uh, concepts uh, on the surface of sphere. Sphere is a very simple geometry and uh, it allows us to understand the uh, curved spaces or uh, Riemann geometry. So today's uh, lecture is called the two sphere or uh, S2. Uh, it is usually called uh, a curved uh, space. So this is a part of course uh, PH of 4205 at uh, IASER Calcutta. A two sphere also known as uh, a ball. A sphere is an interesting but simple geometry. A sphere cannot be mapped one to one onto a R2. So it's uh, not a flat space that it has a curved geometry. The distance element on a sphere is given as a ds square is equal to d theta square plus sin square theta d phi square. Now here uh, theta and phi are coordinates uh, on the sphere. The theta takes an angle from 0 to pi and uh, phi takes a uh, azimuthal angle from 0 to 2 pi. This distance element can be easily obtained from the length element in polar coordinate that is uh, given as a d s square is equal to d r square plus r square d theta square into sin square theta d phi square. In this case uh, r3 is considered as a r cross uh, s2 where r is a radial direction and uh, s2 is a, a sphere. By restricting or constraining uh, r to be constant we get the length element on the sphere. We can also assume r is equal to 1 to simplify we get a distance element on the sphere. Now uh, let's quickly look at the basis element on the uh, sphere. The metric space here is given as a ds square is equal to d theta square plus sin square d phi square. The metric uh, tensor in this case is a diagonal and off diagonal elements are 0. The g11 is 1 and g22 is a sin square theta. The inverse metric component can be easily obtained by inverting the diagonal element and that what we have is a 1 0 0 1 by sin square theta. Now let us uh, look at uh, how the unit vector in uh, theta and phi direction behave. Let us take a vector along theta direction we call it uh, E1 hat with the component uh, 1 0. Let us take the magnitude of this that is GAB into EA theta EB theta. Now we see that clearly it is 1. We explicitly can calculate this using this metric and that is unit vector and it does not depend on the position. It is always uh, uh, same in all locations. That is because theta theta component of a metric is 1 and that behaves uh, exactly like the Euclidean uh, distance. However, if we take a constant vector in the phi direction, let us take a E vector in the phi as a 0, 1 that is again constant uh, component. Now we take uh, its uh, dot product with itself or the magnitude of that vector is given by GAB into EA phi EB phi and that turns out to be sin square theta because we have a sin square theta as a component of uh, G phi phi. So that depends on the position and it is a maximum on the equator and it is uh, 0 on the poles, both poles north and south pole when theta is equal to 0 and pi. Now we can normalize it but however it breaks down when we have a theta is equal to 0 and that location has a coordinate singularity. There are two coordinate singularities when theta is equal to uh, 0 and theta is equal to pi. Okay, Let us do a parallel transport on a 2D sphere. Again, we have a distance element. I am writing it here again and again so that uh, you can uh, remember it uh, any time. Vector field is given. These are the red arrows. Now take a vector at this position and then let us um, parallel transport to the immediate neighborhood and then we see that it is being dragged along uh, without changing its magnitude and direction. Easiest way of doing it is uh, 
just simply move the vector along the great circle and uh, that would not uh, change its magnitude or direction. Once uh, you do the parallel transport, you can see that this is a vector field at that point. It is a parallel transported uh, vector and that would be different. But now we have a both vector at the same point. We can uh, subtract them from one to another. So that is uh, mainly what we are uh, doing it. But exact calculation we will do when we know how to actually compute the connection coefficient. Now I will uh, take a real example of a sphere and uh, show how various uh, geometry can be interpreted. Okay, today we are going to take an example of a curved space time. We have studied a little bit about curved space time. Most of them have been abstract uh, mathematical concept. Let's uh, study a bit about uh, example in the real world and uh, possibly we can use it uh, throughout our course to understand uh, how does uh, different things are uh, represented in curved space. So the sphere is uh, one of the interesting example in uh, common language uh, it is called a ball. It has been fascinated uh, humanity throughout of all ages. So people have been uh, very fond of uh, playing with this object. This is a typical ball with which one plays a uh, basketball. I'm not advertising any company, it's just uh, using it as a concept to study. It can come in uh, various uh, sizes. You could have uh, this uh, fascinating object. Uh, this is a replica of moon with the light embedded on this. However, uh, it requires a different uh, setting of uh, lights to see it in this video. Let me see if you can actually see the light. So this is a pale yellow. It is a night lamp, so it's not good during a daytime or with this bright set of light used for taking videos. The bluish color is uh, far more visible in this case. Uh, anyway, other thing could be a simple smooth stone. It is not really a sphere, but from the conceptual point of view, it would do. It can be eventually mapped to appear in a smooth manner. Now you can uh, see that the idea of uh, a flat space time here, locally flat region with the exaggerated effect, you will have to blow up the sphere to large extent to show the local flatness. However, now the first uh, concept to show that uh, this uh, sphere cannot be mapped to uh, Rn or R2. Now sphere uh, usually geometrically noted as uh, S2. It's a two-dimensional uh, uh, space. It is usually obtained by taking outer product of a circle, which is called a S1. Understanding the geometry, we can uh, simply set R is equal to constant in a spherical polar coordinate system. In the flat space time or uh, R3, spherical polar coordinate uh, system is referred as S2 cross R. The S2 is the sphere, I've taken outer product with the R, which is the radial coordinate. If we assume radial coordinate to be constant, that is a dr to be zero in the polar coordinate, you would get essentially geometry or the length element on the sphere. One of the important things to understand is that this sphere cannot be mapped one to one to Rn. So you might have studied in earlier, it even comes under the uh, complex uh, analysis too, the sphere cannot be mapped to R2. So this is to say that uh, we could have an R2 here, which is represented by a flat sheet. You can even have a coordinate system. Coordinate system is a Euclidean coordinate system and that is the unit vector do not uh, change. We could on the other hand, we could also have a polar coordinate system. I took a photocopy of uh, whatever I have. So this uh, represents the circle. Here it is a polar coordinate system. In this case, coordinate uh, is represented by S1 cross R. You have uh, circles and uh, you have a radial coordinate system. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, these are meant for the size of pizzas which you can uh, make. So these are the coordinate system. Idea is that 
this cannot be mapped to this or all the points in this cannot be mapped to this. So you would say that of course it won't map because this is a flat and this is also flat whereas this is a, or this or any of these are a curved surface. How do we map since you are also expert of uh, Lagrangian mechanics you also know that uh, this uh, Euclidean coordinate system has a little applicability we could easily use a curved coordinate uh, system or a generalized coordinate system where it don't have to be represented by a set of parallel lines we could have a arbitrary curve passing through them and you could even bend them. that means that uh, you could uh, simply do this okay and uh, try to map it and now you flatten this up you would get the set of uh, wrinkles which would uh, represent our uh, generalized coordinate uh, system the mapping essentially means that you someday wrap it up okay and uh, then uh, stretch it open and this is what we call this point being mapped into rn or r2 in this case so this can be done like this so uh, what i'm going to uh, show you is that it is not possible to cover up a whole thing in one to one way between this object and this object no matter how much you do so you might be familiar that the fishmongers would uh, easily wrap your uh, fish in a paper so why not do it it simply say that you don't have to be too technical about it you see that i have covered the whole uh, coordinate system in a single uh, wrap and that means I have everything covered because uh, this is not true. The reason which I am saying is that the mapping has to be one to one. That means uh, uh, when you neatly wrap, not just jumble up like a fish monger or the vegetable seller. So you just simply map it like this. I am neatly doing it so that uh, you will understand what is going on. This, I have uh, mapped the, the whole uh, thing, the Rn into this uh, object or S2, uh, you can take that to be S2. But of course, this is not one to one mapping. Let me show why it is merely unwrapping. See, let's take this point. When I do this, I have mapped to one point. When I do this, again, it is mapped to another point. When I'm mapping again, I have mapped into third point. So if you have a one to one mapping, one point on your uh, sphere should not be mapped to a more than one point okay so that is the basic idea that this not one to one mapping now you would say that ha uh, i'm trying to keep keep you so you just simply cut off i do this okay i just uh, avoid this off and then i avoid this off such that there is only one mapping okay so the idea is that this can't be done unless you remove at least a single point. So you are going to do it, you can do it smoothly as long as you leave a small hole here. Okay, then you can map it and that is a complex analysis you might have studied. That is the one, uh, there are many such possibilities if you leave out some region. So that means to say that overall it is not possible to map a sphere into a sheet of paper or Rn or your coordinate system even with generalized coordinate uh, unless you map one point more than once that means uh, you have to remove sing that single point and then you can have your one-to-one uh, -one mapping that means that the single coordinate patch cannot cover uh, your sphere or uh, S2 so this is a main uh, point of the crux that uh, it is not actually uh, Rn, it is more than Rn, so that is why we call it S2. It is the easiest uh, way of looking at the curved uh, space because the sphere is the simplest of the curved space because uh, it has a constant uh, curvature. Now we see that this mapping on from the sphere to a sheet of paper uh, is uh, historically of a uh, lot of importance. We know that our uh, Earth is a sphere of course uh, if you are a believer of a flat earth uh, then you can easily do this without any practical difficulties unfortunately more and more uh, we believe that the earth is a sphere that means uh, all the points on the earth can be represented by two angles uh, whatever you want to call them 
but the sphere is a not very easy object to carry around unless like a sheet of paper you can uh, simply fold it and put it in your pocket and go anywhere so for travelers especially for the sea travelers in the early case or uh, whoever want to travel around the globe and if you want to carry your mark a uh, spear is a not good thing to carry so somehow you have to map a spear into sheet of paper and uh, map it out it make your map on the uh, flat space time so this uh, process or whole uh, subject is the car cartography the cartographer know that you cannot map spear onto the uh, paper so you got to remove certain points and uh, certain point get exaggerated you might have seen several maps uh, for specific purposes there are specific uh, maps because the transformation from sphere to sheet of paper or r2 is a non trivial and non unique you can do it many different way so based on your utility of map you use different projection that is called the orthoscopic projection or the uh, that is a cartography people uh, use those kind of projection depending on your uh, importance of specific region you would like to map it as accurately as possible and leave the distortion far away from uh, what you are not interested one of the easiest way to see it is the size of uh, greenland size of the greenland look huge compared to as close as or as big as uh, india or africa for that matter actually it is not big it is just a projection you could uh, browse through various youtube videos and figure out there are some who gives the actual comparison between the size of various continent when it is uh, done projected on the map on the 2d case a lot of uh, artifact happens the sailors uh, who knew all this they have a various uh, projections to carry on depending on where they are sailing advantage is instead of carrying this you could carry a whole lot of these papers and then uh, uh, you can study them so that is the important from the practical perspective let's come back to our uh, problem of a sphere as a curved space time it is clear that we cannot map a sphere onto a sheet of paper or r s2 to rn one to one mapping is not possible so we have to do it patch wise that is the only way so we take a region uh, locally flat we assume that is true in fact when you blow up very large or the radius of sphere tend to infinity then it would become flat so that is uh, shown in this uh, case in the case of uh, this uh, space time you take a small region here okay and uh, your point may be p and then uh, you map it onto the your coordinate system with the reference point p here and you can do all your this thing which we have seen so the importance of uh, curvilinear coordinate system you would uh, see that the size of a unit vector would uh, change from point to point when you look at the equatorial uh, plane you will see when theta is equal to pi by 2 so as a sphere can be mapped on to rn in using different patches so for example uh, you could have a coordinate transformation uh, which would be mapped a uh, sphere on to the flat space time this is our flat space time you could do it another one uh, another patch and then you can link all these patches and then uh, you can have a uh, your manifold that is what we do in the uh, curved manifold that you simply take uh, any point interest to you and map them to, to flat space time and do your calculation the whole uh, space time or whole space may not be mapped one point onto the r2 so but individually small region can that let's look at the one of this uh, coordinate system which we call as the theta phi coordinate system we have a pole when uh, uh, theta is set to be zero and we have uh, another pole southern pole where theta is equal to pi by two theta goes from zero to pi and uh, pi goes from uh, zero to two pi so this completely map the uh, your uh, sphere now you see that it can be only a map to flat space time with various patches let's consider one of these patches uh, when it is uh, stuck here you can map them neatly i made it little bigger so that it is easier to explain now we don't need sphere this is the mapping which we have on the flat uh, space time 
Now, one of the thing which you see is that the uh, these grids are now differently spaced. That means that uh, uh, when the distance here looks like a theta uh, is a, a pi by two, the phi is separated by a larger angle, and all of them get uh, accumulated here. So when uh, theta is equal to zero, you have a problem. All the uh, phi mapped into a single point, and that is what we call you have a singularity. So this is a coordinate singularity, exactly similar to what you have in the polar coordinate. When uh, r is equal to zero, all the uh, phi maps to single point. Uh, that is uh, r is equal to zero is a uh, theta phi going from uh, zero to two pi. The same thing happens here. When uh, theta is zero or theta is uh, pi, then you have uh, uh, all the points corresponding to phi is equal to zero to two pi map to single point. So you have two coordinate singularity here at uh, theta is equal to uh, zero and uh, theta is equal to pi. At theta is equal to pi by two, the separation between uh, phi d phi uh, makes a, a different size than this. So your unit vector here depends on the uh, location. So if you take a vector, uh, let's say 1, 0, that is uh, 1 in theta and uh, you call it a theta hat, okay, that is a, you may want to call it a unit vector and then you measure the distance between them. Now you go along the different phi's, phi is equal to constant here and theta you measure, it looks like that these distances are same. You see that uh, it is going through the great circle here, and no matter uh, which phi you take, the theta will have a same length for a given uh, uh, unit vector. So length of the unit vector does not change along the theta, so that remains same as uh, our Euclidean distance. However, there is a difference when you take a phi, phi displacement, then you have a phi is equal to oh, 0, 1, uh, you see that uh, there is a sine square uh, theta factor get multiplied, which is equal to 1 on the equatorial plane and 0 at uh, uh, theta is equal to 0. So that means that uh, when you take a unit vector like this, it is no longer a unit, its magnitude depends on theta. That means when you take theta uh, goes closer to the 0 or uh, when you take theta is equal to 0, the length of this vector uh, becomes zero and it reaches a maximum value at theta is equal to pi by two that becomes a unit vector and then it is again goes to zero at the southern uh, pole. So this is what you say that uh, your unit vector, it depends on the uh, position. So you start from an angle zero, your, uh, this vector is becomes takes a maximum value of one here and becomes zero again at the southern pole. So this is what you say that your unit vector itself uh, changes from point to point and that you have to normalize. This normalization cannot be achieved at uh, theta is equal to zero because the normalization factor itself uh, goes away. Now we are uh, talking about the parallel transport. We have seen that the vector when we moved along the theta direction is uh, magnitude does not change. It is exactly like flat space time. There is uh, no difference. However, when we look at this uh, same thing from the perspective of the uh, change in the direction along uh, theta and with the change in the direction along phi, as we go along like this, that would depend on theta. It depends on which angle of the theta you have taken. So especially on the theta is equal to pi by two, it does not change that is on this great circle, it does not uh, change. But when you go along to closer to the equator, you see that the length of these vectors keep on reducing and become zero at the pole. Now, if we take the idea of parallel transport, and now we take our uh, vector field, uh, which we are uh, studying is to be uh, zero, one, okay? Uh, that means we are looking at the vector field which is uh, zero on the theta component and one along the phi component. That is the unit vector itself. Now, uh, if we take other way around, it is not going to give us any result. We know that it is going to be all constant. But if we take this uh, zero, one, we know that it is going to change. 
but on the equatorial plane there is no change that means if you have a vector field this would be always uh, let's look at this this would be vectors like this so when i drag it along this to this there is not going to be change it is going to remain same and we are not going to see any differences and uh, the differentiation is going to be zero but on the other hand if we move from uh, this point to uh, this point okay so we are looking at the vector like this which uh, or this is wrong we are going to look at the vector of uh, this type uh, which changes only along the phi not along theta and this is going to be this but when we move along this okay that uh, vector itself may look not change component that is what we have here but uh, you see that the here the magnitude of this vector is going to be 1 you can calculate it uh, based on the uh, infinitesimal separation or the <clears throat> metric given on the uh, sphere the length of the vector 1 0 0 is 1 here but when you commit here the same vector field as a vector field when you do it you would see that it is pointed in this direction is magnitude will be divided by 1 by sine theta that is because the unit vector itself changes now if you drag this along this no matter what curve you use the easiest way is to use the great circle transform it here our idea of parallel transport is we are not going to change the magnitude or direction of this vector as we bring it to here. Now we see that direction is not changed itself, uh, but the magnitude of the vector field here is 1 by sin theta, but here the magnitude is 1. If we are going to change it, we see that there is a difference between the transported vector and the field of the vector there itself. If we transport the unit vector from here to here, based on the rule of uh, uh, parallel transportation, we are not supposed to change the magnitude of the vector. So it is still going to be 1. So we can drag it along the unit circle and come uh, great circle. We can drag this along the great circle and come back to this point. And then hence the transported vector will have a unit norm. But the vector field itself will have a 1 by sine theta. The difference between that we take and then we tend this uh, two points come closer and uh, overlap with that and that is what gives us the uh, covariant differentiation. The connection essentially means that the, we are going to keep both magnitude and the direction uh, preserved under the parallel transport. Whatever the actual law may be not important. It may be done in several different ways. There is no unique way of doing it. When we do it, it essentially mapped to this place both preserving the magnitude and direction. In this case magnitude is 1, in this case magnitude is 1 by sine theta depending on where it is. So this difference is exactly what we are talking about the parallel transport.